It is sunny, breezy, and very warm at the Orange Bowl in Miami where the Bills and the Dolphins are ready for their first meeting of the 86 season. Good afternoon, everyone. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy on a very hot, humid day in South Florida. Temperature in the 90s, high humidity. It's going to take a toll as the game wears on, particularly Trump for Buffalo. They've not practiced in it, and oftentimes the team loses in the fourth quarter because of it. Uh, Don, it's a real test of team depth. I'm not sure how deep Buffalo is. Miami works out in this weather, so they're a little bit more used to it, but all week long, the coach, Hank Bullis, says uh, consume fluids, kind of store up. It doesn't help. There is nothing more uncomfortable when you play football in humidity. We'll see today match for the first time in their careers two of the celebrated quarterback class of 1983, Jim Kelly of the Bills and Dan Marino of the Dolphins, the multimillionaires who have been having some problems lately, particularly Dan Marino, Trump, has thrown seven interceptions in the last two games. What's his problem? Well, Don, I think for quarterbacks, the only position of choice on the field is that of quarterback. And Marino admits that he's trying to do a little more than he should with this Dolphin offense. First three weeks, the defense failed. Last two weeks, now it's Dan Marino who is throwing the ball into coverage. And those seven interceptions and just two touchdowns, very much out of character for Danny. Jim Kelly hopes to get the Bills on track today. They've lost four games by a total of 11 points. Buffalo will score today. There's Kelly getting that right arm ready because the Dolphins are giving up 35 points a game. Statistically, they're last on defense in the NFL, but they're number one in offense, particularly the passing game better than ever, although yeah. not lately. And Kelly loves this field. This is where he went to college, played for the Miami Hurricanes, 20 and 6 as a starter with the Miami Dolphins. Uh, excuse me, the Miami Hurricanes. Hank Bullock, in his second season at Buffalo, his first as a head coach, took over in the fifth game a year ago. Don Shula, who's dominated Buffalo over the seasons. The Bills have only won twice in the last 20 years here at Miami. They do have the number one passing game to the Dolphins in the NFL. But of late, they've come a cropper on offense. And on defense, they have been awful. Had only seven points last week against New England and are giving up 35 points a game. Through just five games this season, the Dolphin defense has already given up 50 or more points on two occasions. The kickoff by the Bills, Scott Norwood, is out of bounds, so he'll kick it again from the 35-yard line. Temperature at game time, 93 degrees. Humidity in the 70s. And as you said, Trump, and you experienced it as a player here, there's nothing you can do to prepare nothing. for it. It's going to take its toll in the fourth quarter no matter what you do. You go to the sideline, you consume as much fluids as you possibly can. You don't want to overdo it, though, because and then you have the upset stomach. You try to ice the players down with towels but the weight loss it affects the guys who really have a very low uh, rating of body fat more than the big heavy guys I mean the big fat guys they can afford to lose eight or ten or twelve pounds in a football game but a little guy the running backs the defensive backs the wide receivers they end up with leg cramps and it's very debilitating I had a situation down here one time where I had to have uh, IVs because of the heat and humidity late in the football season. I had a headache from that for three weeks afterwards. It was awful. You just don't Is that recover. all you were doing down here? No, that's all I was doing. Yeah, it was just yeah. from a lack of body fluids. Well, I'll tell you, you talk about it being tough on the little guys. It's no good deal for the big guys either. They've had to transfuse a number of people with glucose going to the airport after they played down here. And now... The Bills are ready to try again to kick it off as they'll hit it from their 30-yard line. You see the domination of the Shula Dolphins over the years. Buffalo last one here in 1983 in an overtime game. Bills are one and four, but they're a pretty confident young team. A good hit by Norwood, driven back. And Lorenzo Hampton will not bring it out, so it'll come out to the 20 in there. Marino with the number one passing game in the NFL despite his seven interceptions of the last two weeks. Ready to direct the offense. Hampton, a second year back from Florida, good runner. Woody Bennett, a power back. He said he didn't see the Dolphins trying all that hard in their loss last weekend at New England. Shula said, I didn't see that, or the people that weren't trying wouldn't be here. Very critical matchup. Dallenbach, the left tackle for Miami, has to go against Bruce Smith of Buffalo, a rising star defensive end. People in the league think he's going to be the dominant pass rusher in the years to come. He, of course, was the number one player drafted a season ago. Down his second year, out of Virginia Tech. Smith is 78 at the top of your screen. Dolphins like to throw early. This time they go to Lorenzo Hampton, and the Miami Dolphins get the ball to their 27-yard line. Running at Smith, they get seven. On the Miami Dolphins are looking for any little thing to change their 
their attitude. That's a big play. Last week against New England, first play of the game, Dan Marino threw an interception. Linebackers Eugene Marv has been a standout for Buffalo, an inside backer. A couple of those backers undersized, Frazier and Cumbie. The secondary, they've been switching people around. Bellinger, who played on a national championship team at Miami, University of Miami, starting today for the Bills. It is now second down and two where they spotted the ball. Bennett, the up back, takes it ahead for a first down and some more. He's out to the 42-yard line. Martin Bayless, the strong safety for Buffalo, knocked him down. The Miami players had a closed-door team meeting this week. One of the first they've ever had under Don Shulin. Some hard words were spoken. They're ready to play, I think. Joe Robbie, the team owner, came out. He normally comes out only for picture day. Talked to Don Shula. Shula said, you want to talk to the team? Robbie did. Player, players felt better. So they got a chance to correct some real woes here today against Buffalo. No score. First quarter as Marino puts it up for the first time. A timing pattern. A hard stick put on by Charles Romes. As Duper goes up and comes down with the ball, that was his 25th reception of this season. Mark Duper. He's had 100-yard receiving games the last three weeks. He's having an exceptional year, too. 18.4 yards per catch. Young guy who will go after the football. You can't intimidate these two wide receivers by the Miami Dolphins, Clayton and Duper. A lot of teams try to because they're small. Both 5'9". Textbook tackled by Rome, but it was six yards down with second down and four now. Hampton caught in the backfield. McManny got him first, number 95, the left end in his third year from San Diego State. Bills are a much more aggressive team this season, a lot more attacking. The Miami coaches said you can't call their blitzes because they come so many different ways. They gamble more now. George Cumby, inside backer, picked up off the waiver wire from Green Bay, was also on the stop. Guy Frazier, George Cumbie, Eugene Marvin, Daryl Talley, the backers. Now Tony Nathan, an excellent receiver out of the backfield, comes in the game, as does Nat Moore. Buffalo now with six defensive backs down, one linebacker and a four-man rush on this third and about five. Third and five it is, as Marino sets from the shotgun. Throw and a catch. It's a first down for the Dolphins. Jim Jensen, a backup tight end. He plays all over the field. Got short of the zone coverage and came back at the ball. They needed five, they got six, so it's down now to the 48-yard line of Buffalo. And already a change for the Miami Dolphins. That's Jensen's first catch of the 1986 season. This guy can play quarterback, tight end, running back. They call him Crash. He wears a neck collar. But that was an excellent pattern run by somebody who doesn't run a lot of patterns. You cannot underestimate the... Mother Nature factor today. Temperature in the 90s and high humidity. Unseasonably hot even for South Florida in October. Here is a Lorenzo Hampton taking on a good stick by Bayless, the strong safety. On a first down carry, he didn't get much. Dolphins are going to be going to quick timing patterns on the pass. They have such great respect for Bruce Smith, Buffalo's right end. The Outland Trophy winner from Virginia Tech. On shoot on the sideline, it's been four long weeks as the head coach of the Miami Dolphins here. Tell you what, though, in his career in Miami, he's run off a lot of coaches in the AFC Eastern Division. This is just one down time. He's still positive. He wants his players to play reckless. He's not giving up on them. Still a very formidable passing game, number one in the NFL, averaging 300 yards a game. Marino, home run ball, and it's the wrong way. His receiver, Mark Duper, came back at the ball. And Marino was throwing a fly pattern, so it now will be third down and 10. Daryl Talley all over Dan Marino. Looked like an audible at the line of scrimmage because Marino was reading blitz. And he's got to get rid of it because there's 56. Daryl Talley, the outside linebacker, right in his face. So now we'll see what the Dolphins go to on third down and 10. We have 10.43 to play in the first quarter at the Orange Bowl in Miami. The Dolphins at one and four. If they scored another touchdown in each of their five games, they'd be two and three. The Bills are one and four. If they scored another touchdown in each of their five games, they'd be five and oh. Four losses by 11 points. Third and 10, downfield throw for a first down. James Pruitt, a rookie wide receiver, comes off the flank and takes the ball inside the Buffalo 35 yard line and down to the 31. So on third and 10, Marino hits the 18-yard strike. Throw it is an extraordinary athlete. 
but Marino doesn't like to throw the ball to him a lot because he tends to drop it. Marino with good pass protection, which is always one of the real earmarks of the Miami football team. That's a nice catch there. Very soft hands, hangs on to it. Bellinger tries to get away from him, but a big first down by Miami. Now Marino might be checking off, yelling out to his wide receivers as he looks at the Buffalo defense and first and 10. Throwing a catch. Again, the receivers come back. This is Mark Clayton. And he's finally knocked out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Now this looks like the Miami playoff offense of recent years. That one was good for a 21-yard game. That was on Bellinger. You gotta respect the speed of both Duper and Clayton. Bellinger does when he turns outside. That's what the receiver is looking for. The quarterback reads that move by the defensive back when he goes from his back pedal to the side shuffle. That's when you make the in route. So far this drive now, no sign of any problem by the Miami offense. Now it is first down and goal from the 10 yard line. Marino looks at his tight end off and down close as he goes to Lorenzo Hampton. He's hit at the five yard line. Daly got him first. Eugene Marv came up, finished him off. Also on the play was George Cumby. It'll be second and goal from the five yard line. Here comes Hardy into the game, a tight end. A look at the scoreboard. First of the day, one o'clock games just getting underway and nothing up yet. At least in those first three games. And now we look at Miami go second down and goal from the ten yard left five yard line of Buffalo. Marino looking, swings it out, and a broken up play. Ball was dropped by Lorenzo Hampton, and then Charles Romes helped him out. Dolphins took the opening kickoff and moved right down the field. Big throws by Marino. The last 21-yarder to Clayton got him down close, first and goal, and now they'll go third and goal from the two. And they bring in their passing set. Pruitt, along with Tony Nathan, Franklin comes out. Or excuse me, Bennett comes out. Hampton comes out to be a spread formation. It's a nice spot for a trap up the middle. Third and goal from the five. Marino out of the shotgun now. Lone setback is Nathan. He'll be swinging out of the backfield to your right. Up the middle, and again, a complete misconnection down close, and again, the pressure's put on. Coming on a blitz was Dwight Green, a big safety for the Bills, a 210-pounder from Oklahoma out of the U.S. Football League, and he got a blitz on Marino and made him hurry the throw. Don, Buffalo did an excellent job of disguising their defense. They had all 11 guys right at the line of scrimmage, and they were very late in moving out. That's one of the things that is something that Hank Fuller likes to do. Always disguise the defense that you're running. That time, Marino didn't read it. Incompletion, Revez in for a field goal. The Dolphins have swept both games from the Bills the past two seasons. Quad Revez, who's not had a good year kicking the ball, does get that field goal up and good. And with 8.53 to play in the first quarter, the Dolphins go on the board first, leading three to nothing. Back with the Miami kickoff after this. Drive, you can see the Bills go straight to the sideline in the Orange Bowl, grabbing for the oxygen, trying to get as much liquids in their system as they possibly can. And both benches have those big fans. They'll help. That was a 13-play drive by the Miami Dolphins. Consumed just over six minutes, which is just what any offensive coach would love to have on an opening drive. Buffalo defense out there a long time in that opening drive as Miami hits the short field goal by Reves and takes a 3-0 lead. Riddick is back with the rookie, Ronnie Harmon, for the Bills now. Here's Reves into the ball to kick it off. This will be Harmon from Iowa, number one draft choice. Breakaway runner, and he's out to the 19-yard line. Looks like Jim Jensen got him. And so the Bills go on offense first and ten. Jim Kelly at quarterback. Here he comes with Greg Bell as running back, and he'll be catching balls also. Ricky Moore, big back out of Alabama, 235 pounds, starts as fullback. First catch. Andre Reed are the wide receivers. Mets Flyers is playing well at tight end, has caught 15 passes so far. Wilford, the right guard, is just a rookie from Vanderbilt, but he's a number one, and they like him at Buffalo. First down. 
Open man taking the ball on the far flank and moving up the field very nicely. To get ahead is Butch Roll at rookie tight end from Michigan State. A gain of 11 yards on the play. Haven't gone to roll often. D.J. Turner, Bob Baumhauer, George Little across the defensive front. They've had problems. So have the linebackers. Offerdahl has been terrific. He's a rookie, number two draft choice. Offerdahl is the game captain today. He has been Miami's best player in offense or defense, by, in the opinion of his coaches. Dolphins giving up 35 points a game. Buffalo gets 11 on first down. Now they go from the 31 first down. Greg Bell. Makes the look and breaks the run. Out across the 40 yard line, up close to the 45 yard line. And already you can see a change by Buffalo after that 14 yard gain by Greg Bell. Starting the game with two tight ends, a lone running back in Greg Bell, and two wide receivers. That was an excellent sweep run by the Buffalo Bills. Two plays, two first downs by the Buffalo Bills. Didn't take them long, did it? Bills cracking that Dolphin defense with 8.29 to play. First quarter, Dolphins three, Buffalo nothing. Bell waits for the block. Puts on the move, and Greg Bell's ahead for a nine-yard game. As the Buffalo blockers just blowing Miami off the ball. Brzezinski made the tackle, but a nine-yard downfield play. Don, same play the other side. It was sweep left with double tight ends. Now you got a double pull by the guard, 73. You see him out in front uh, with an excellent block. Will Wolford, Greg Bell just following lots of people. Brzezinski finally makes the tackle, but that's three plays, 14, 11, and 9. Just about a first down offense for Buffalo. They don't know what third down is in this drive. Kelly takes a look. Open man coming out of the backfield, and Riddick sprints up the sideline and gets inside the Miami 40-yard line, down to the 38. That Dolphin defense Trump is playing a deep zone, and Buffalo's just coming underneath it. They're also getting no pass rush whatsoever on Jim Kelly in his first drive. At the line of scrimmage, we'll watch behind Baumhauer. He's 73 right in the middle. Ken Hull is the center, handling him by himself. Look at the guards. They're standing there with, with somebody looking for somebody to block. Hall does the job himself, doesn't need anybody. First down carry, and the Bills take it straight ahead. Ricky Moore had a terrific game against the Jets last week, had 95 yards rushing and receiving the ball. 235, Buffalo's been looking for the power back for a long time. Watch the nose tackle, Bob Baumhauer, against the run. Don, I think he's playing on one leg. Missed the entire 85 season with the knee injury. Still trying to rebuild strength in that leg. In that leg, I admire him for being out there, but he's not at nowhere close to 100%. Greg Bell is the eye back on a second and six. Play fake to him, and Kelly looks for distance. He's got a man with a step on the defense, and it's tipped away. Tipped the ball away from Andre Reed, running a fly. Lankford was beaten, but came back. And so now it will be third down for the first time in this drive for the Bills. So far, Buffalo Bills run the ball very well, so they run a play-action fake. Lankford in single coverage, looking back for the football. Just gets his hand on it. That's the first miss the Buffalo Bills have had in this opening drive, Don. Dolphins lead at 3 nothing. They drove with the opening kickoff. Look at for six minutes down the field. Stall with the Buffalo 5 and 50 short field goal to lead. 3 nothing. Flip picked up. Kelly in trouble. And Yankee Ship gets him. The most maligned player on the Miami team. An Oklahoma linebacker, Jackie Ship, a number one draft choice. Who's not had a lot of great days here at the Orange Bowl. Every talk show in this city. Center of conversation is Jackie Ship and his poor play, but he makes a Pro Bowl play there. That's the 14th sack by the Dolphins so far this year. They had a double linebacker blitz. 56 off for Dahl. Ship gets him. Watch the strength of Jim Kelly. He just drags Jackie Ship across the ground. Begrudgingly goes down. And the drive stopped by the Dolphins. 
With a prevailing wind at his back now, Scott Norwood's going to try a 60-yard field goal. And the Miami Dolphins are stacking the front. They're coming to block it. Good breeze behind Norwood. It'll give him an assist as he gets it up. He's got the distance. Well hit oh. ball. He hits the upright that goes back. It's been that time of the year for the Bills. Would have been good from 70 had it been six inches to the left. He could kick a thousand balls and not be able to do that again from 50 yards out. That's his first yards miss out. of the 1986 season. Good spot. You can see how high this ball is. It kind of fades on him a little bit. A little bit of a slice and it hits that upright squarely. No points. And so the Dolphins take it over. John Kidd, Norwood with the kick. Plenty of distance, but watch the holder. Norwood, kickers always think it's good, but the holder, come on, come on, come on. Stay Not there, a live there. action. Marino dropping to throw. Swings it out near flat. It's cut by the tight end, Hardy, but just for a two-yard gain out to the 43-yard line. Not only was it a missed field goal for Buffalo hitting the upright, but it gave the Dolphins excellent position to start their second drive outside their own 40. Tom Howard, in a sense, Trump playing on one leg. And They're uh, taking care of his injured left leg, too. He wears uh, one of those Anderson knee braces and is constantly messing with it, trying to get it adjusted right. Said he doesn't have a day without discomfort with that knee. Marino with the quick drop on second down and eight. Over the middle, he's got his tight end. Hardy, free ball. Buffalo has got it. It is a Bills football. Picked up by George Cumby. And he's not done till he's all the way down to the 14-yard line of Miami. So the Bills have a disappointment and then come back and make a huge play. Hardy had it and lost it, and George Cumby, who's said to be undersized, but coming out of Oklahoma as the number one draft choice at Green Bay, he was one of the fastest defensive players in the country. And a very heady player, too. And Don Shula, once again, the disgust of his football team. At this point in the season, they were minus eight in the giveaway takeaway with that turnover now minus nine through the first five and a quarter football games a 38 yard return well, Buffalo has another chance now looks like the officials are looking at a replay of some sort or at least consulting on the sideline to see if Bruce already had his second foot down sure looked like a fumble from up here yeah. he hadn't took two steps with it the thing about it is though the official up here in the booth can look at the replay and he can determine whether or not Hardy's second foot was down. Then and only then is it truly a completion. He has control of the football and the second foot hits the ground. So with 5.18 to go in the first quarter and Miami leading 3-0, the fumble goes and so does the return by George Cumbie who takes it down to the Miami 14 and so the Bills now have it first and 10 inside the Dolphin 15 yard line. Burkett goes out wide to the right. Andre Reed on the left side. Goes to Flyers. Kelly goes to the run, and again, the Buffalo offensive line whacks open the Miami defense. Richard, the left guard, and Jones, the left tackle, blasting out, as did Kent Hull. The Jets have gone up in front of favored New England 7-0. Dallas up on Washington 7-0. Bears and Oilers scoreless at the Astrodome, at least for the moment. Atlanta up on the Rams down in Georgia. As right now, the Bills have it second down and just about three for the first down. Second and six for the touchdown. Back to the run. Back to Greg Bell. And right into the Miami defense he goes again behind that center, Kent Hull. It's going to be a first down for Buffalo, first down and goal. Certainly no pretenses on Buffalo's idea here, if they believe that Bob, Bob Baumhauer, former Pro Bowl defensive nose tackle, playing on one leg, that's exactly where they're going. Good push by Hall, Richard, and Wolford up front. And before anybody touches a running back, they gain three or four yards. This short drive set up by the fumble recovery and returned by George Cumbie. It's 3 0 Miami, first quarter. First and goal, Bill. Greg Bell taking on tacklers, and he's down close to the goal line, but not in. One yard line. 
Bell wants that ball a lot, and if he doesn't get it, Kelly will hear about it. The bachelors, they share a house together. Do they really? Up there in Clarence, New York. Uh, you can see excellent blocking up front. It looks like the guy who makes the contact first is Brzezinski. Stops him just short of the goal line. Second and goal. Just about point blank. Yard out. Kelly calls his own number, and he didn't get there. The whole Miami defense was looking for it up the gut, and that's where the Bills came with it. And so now, a critical down comes up for Buffalo, third down and goal from the one-yard line. Jim Kelly loves the Orange Bowl, and the University of Miami loves Jim Kelly. As you're pointing out, Trump, there was serious conversation down here six years ago about dropping college football. He saved it. Now they're number one in the country. Bell could be going wide. Here's Greg Bell over the top, and he didn't get there. Great Stop play. Inches from the goal line. Andy Hendel, a rookie linebacker, came over the top and met Greg Bell. Fourth down and inches. John Alferdahl, number 56, is also in there. They get penetration. Now watch what happens. Uh, Hendel comes over and hits him. Offerdahl hits him. Bell just a little bit short. That's one time running as opposed to jumping. I think Bell would have gotten in the end zone. They're going for it, Don. Byron, a 235-pound rookie fullback, leads the blocking, and Greg Bell gets into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Fuller fist in the air, so the Bills had to work hard for the final yards, but they get in and take the lead, 6-3, to three, with 2 minutes and 15 seconds to play in the first quarter. One of the things that Hank Fuller wanted for his offense was good lead blockers. He's got them in Ricky Moore, and this time Carl Byram blasts up in there. Greg Bell is no dummy. Follow the big guys. Hendel once again. He just reached the ball. Over. Oh, that, that's not supposed to be a touchdown. You're not supposed to uh, pull the ball out over the goal line and have it count. This one's tough to see from that angle, but the official on the far side of the field put his hands in the air. Six the points. Now Norwood to try the point F. Good. And with 2.15 to play in the first quarter, the Bills take the lead with a 7-3 count on the board. Buffalo's kick off in a moment. We're going to watch this football go over the goal line. But, Don, I'm telling you, if the ball's not held within the framework of the body, that's no touchdown. You can see the official top side. He puts his hands up signifying touchdown, but you've got to have that ball in the framework of your body in order for it to be a legitimate touchdown. I think Miami held. Well, the officials looked at it back and said, no, it was a touchdown. And so it's on the board. 7-3, Buffalo in the lead, ready to kick off now. Joe Carter and Lorenzo Hampton are back. Carter won't bring it out as Norwood is working in the first quarter with a lot of tailwind coming off the Atlantic Ocean. Now Dan Marino comes back out, took the Dolphins down the field in their first drive. They stalled the Buffalo Five and kicked the field goal to take a 3-0 lead. Next possession after a long miss by Buffalo, a 60-yard miss that hit the upright. Marino took his team down, but then a fumble, and Buffalo turned it into a touchdown. Back after this. On Tricky with Bob Trumpy back at the Orange Bowl where the Bills have just gone in for the touchdown that gave them a 7-3 lead. Dolphins set to go from their 20 now. Marino against the big rock. He loops it. Lorenzo Hampton takes the ball and is knocked out of bounds. As he gets to the 30, he's going to be close to a first down. Might have it. On the tackle number 26, Charles Rome. Rome's on the tackle after a nine-yard game. We have a chance to see the way two nose tackles play the spot. This is Fred Smurless. He's more of a look-see nose tackle. He tries to jump through gaps and look over the center. Baumhauer, on the other hand, is a almost a blind nose tackle when the ball is snapped. Smurless doesn't play by feel. He's looking to get to that quarterback. That time he did pressure Marino. Brings up second for Miami, less than one. Lorenzo Hampton, straight ahead. He's been averaging 3.6 a rush. 
Miami's running game has not been good. Their passing game, 300 yards per, but the running game has been averaging only 80 yards a game, and offensive penalties have taken 60 of that away. They've averaged 60 yards a game in penalties on offense. Last time this Miami Dolphin football team had a 100-yard rusher, it was Joe Carter two years ago. It was against Houston, just 105 yards. And you need balance in the NFL in order to win, Don. The Dolphins are definitely out of balance. Coach Shula in his 24th season as a head coach in the NFL. This is the worst start for any of his teams. Baltimore here. Quick pass and a nice catch. Good for a first down. A slant pattern as coming off the flank. And making the move on the ball was Mark Clayton, who was shut out last week against New England. Didn't catch a ball. You talked about their courage earlier, and that certainly was demonstrated there, right into the teeth of the defense. He goes and gets it. With Paul Warfield, our broadcast partner, Bob Greasy, used to make this pass famous down here in Miami. And for a little guy, he knows he's going to get hit. Bayless, number 43 of Buffalo, did, but he hangs on to the football. Marx Brothers both with big average per catch yardage. So Mark Clayton's 21 a catch. Duper's over 18. Hampton. Big stick. Tony Furjanic, the rookie linebacker from Notre Dame, who's been playing first downs for George Cumbie. Then going out as the Bills are using some slap substitutions early, makes the stick. Very smart to use those substitutions too, Don. Keep as many people on your football team as fresh as possible. Fuller, by the way, it's interesting. When he was with, uh, I think it was New England, he and uh, Fairbanks were the first two guys to settle on the 34 defense every down. I mean, Miami's credited with the 34 defense, but they only used it in special situations. New England used it every down, and Fuller was the defensive coordinator. That's the end of the first quarter with a score of the Bills 7 and the Dolphins 3. Back to the Orange Bowl after this. Telecommunications simply means making a connection. Me to you, A to B. When that meant creating a communications network 22,000 miles above the Earth, they called Cartel. When it meant a 16-phone system at the Omaha headquarters of Vicks Corn Popper, they called Cartel. Small business, a tall order. Cartel can help you communicate better, too. For Cartel, I'm Charlton Heston. Hands off to Horning, slash over the right side, and Vince Lombardi said, when the game is on the line, Paul Horning is the greatest player I've ever seen. He led the Green Bay Packers to three world championships, was twice the league's most valuable player, and he led the NFL three straight years in scoring. I present the golden boy, Paul Horning. It's been a long journey for me from the frozen gridiron in Green Bay to here in Canton, Ohio, but it's a trip I wouldn't have missed for the world. Your journey to the Pro Football Hall of Fame will probably be a lot shorter, but it's one that every fan should make. It's all here. The teams, the stars, the records, so you can see the men and the great plays have been a part of the game we call pro football. For me, being here in the Hall of Fame, it's like crossing that last goal line. I feel like I'm at home. And I know Vince would have thought I was a winner. The Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Don't miss it. This message furnished by the National Football League. T-shirts on Miami Vice. It is uncomfortable down here, and you can see the Buffalo Bills trying very hard to conserve as much strength as they can, protect themselves from that sun and the humidity. Chance of showers, I would think so. Humidity in the 70s. Now the Dolphins start the second quarter, trailing Buffalo 7-3. to three. Second down and eight. Marino gets time, and Marino gets his mark to the 35-yard line. Lorenzo Hampton out of the backfield makes his 19th catch of the season. That's one thing that is very characteristic of the Miami Dolphin offense. They've got those deep threats in Duper and Clayton, so you you, your running backs, Don, have to be excellent receivers. Deep coverage. Marino very quick to go to Nathan and to go to Hampton out in the flat and also to the tight end. So now the Dolphins are challenging as they have the ball just inside the Buffalo 35. On first down, Marino gets time again. And tight end Dan Johnson can't hold it. So it'll be second down and 10 from the Buffalo 34. A couple of weeks ago, Don Shula, after a Miami defeat, said it can't get any worse than this. Last week, after the 34-7 loss at New England, Shula said, I was wrong, and today it was worse. 
Marino there talking to Johnson. It appears that Johnson ran the wrong pattern. Maybe he should have stopped, but because Marino throws this short underneath Johnson. Marino now 9 of 13 for 93 yards. 7 to 3, the Bills lead early in the second quarter. Tony Nathan weaves into the Buffalo defense as he gets down close to the 27-yard line. Eugene Marr, Buffalo's leading tackler, made the stop. It'll bring up third down and about three. Nice mix here by Miami's offense. Play action passing, throwing out in the flat, run this guy. Buffalo has been showing a lot of different blitzes in the game. They haven't in this drive. Let's see what they go to now. Some of those big Buffalo linemen, hands on hips, getting set to tee off. Bruce Smith looks to be warned already in this game. This should not be a blitz down, Don. Third and three, there's a blitz, full one. He gets it away, and Jim Jensen gets it down to the 22-yard line. That's just what Buffalo's been doing. When you're not looking for it or it's not a blitz down, they go to it. But, Don, that's too easy for, a deep, for the offense to read. That's why third and short is a lousy blitz down. Marino from the shotgun can look at everything. Bayless, 43, right there in the corner of your picture, comes outside. He turns Jensen loose. Jensen runs about a four-yard batter, just enough to make the first down. That's a lousy time to blitz. They call it the hot area. They go right to the area the blitzer comes from because it's open. Jensen was free. And now the Dolphins get four new downs. Now he's just at the 22-yard line. Touchdown by Oh, it's drop ball. Mark Clayton, wide open in the end zone, drops the ball. Running the pattern on Derek Burrows. A number one out of Memphis State, although he doesn't always look like one. He had him dead to rights. Clayton ran the out move. Watch Burroughs. He bites on the out move, and bam, Clayton goes by him. Burroughs doesn't even see the ball. No contact. Clayton just dropped that one, although it would have been a very tough catch. Burroughs is going to see that again. Very soon, Clayton going out in the right flank at the top of your screen against Burroughs as he moves off him. Second and ten. saves a touchdown if but for the moment a 20 yard gain on the play and the Dolphins now in position to take the lead again this is an excellent job of looking off defenders by Marino he looks upfield that isolates Marr 54 on Tony Nathan Bayless finally comes in and makes the tackle but you got to give a lot of credit to Marino he looked off that that linebacker and allowed Nathan to get open now, big power back in the game, Ron Davenport, along with Lorenzo Hampton. Davenport stood up and driven back at the two-yard line. First and goal from just outside the two. They got less than a yard. Has again the rookie, Tony Ferjanic, filled with a driving tackle. Mike Hamby there, too. Good job by the Buffalo defense. Jets were talking about a whole new game plan they were going to use to attack New England after the Patriots dominated them in the second game of the season. And the Jets are leading 14-0, as you see some of the other scores from around the NFL. This is the 11th play of this drive. Again, the Bills' defense on the field a long time. 12 minutes to go, first half. 7-3 Buffalo, but Miami with second and goal from inside the two. Davenport, free ball, and the Bills have it in the end zone. That's a touchback. Bills ball. They'll get it at their 20. Verjanic might have freed the ball. Don, it looked like... Hamby recovered. It, it looked like Marino and Davenport never really had the mesh on the handoff. Watch how stretched out Marino's hand is. You see there? It looked like Davenport was just trying that Verjanic ball. Hit him. Never really got a hold of that ball at all. None whatsoever. Again, watch how he's got his arm stretched out, Don. You see how Marino's trying to get it in there? Moran, uh, it looks like Davenport ran that a little too flat. Should have been more at Dan Marino. Results in another turnover. Verjanic hit it with a fist, and Hamby recovers. The Dolphins are stopped. The Bills take over when we come back. Here, Marino fakes the pitch when he spins right. First, right there to the man on the outside. Comes back to try to get the ball to Hampton. 
the Davenport never gets it in there. That ball never gets to the running back at all. Now the Bills go first and ten after a second fumble recovery. Kelly, play taken, loop ball, Burkett comes back at it and gets it out to the 31-yard line. It's a catch and a first down for the Bills, a 12-yard gain. Timing throw by Jim Kelly. Big Mike Hamby with the recovery in the end zone, 11.42 to play now, first half. That's 17 turnovers for the season that the Dolphins have had. They're now minus 10 on the takeaway giveaway. the ball doesn't get much on a first down carry carried it out to about the 34 yard line make it second down and seven John Oferdahl from Western Michigan came in to make the play Miami's leading tackler he was the first player the Dolphins selected in the last draft they didn't have a pick until the second round because their first round went to Tampa Bay as part of the Hugh Green trade and unfortunately Hugh Green is gone for the season with a serious knee injury Oferdahl last week 12 unassisted tackles Andre Reed and Burkett come wide to the right for the Bills. Double tight end. Second down and six. Perfect lead. Greg Bell puts the move on and gets out to the 41-yard line as the Dolphins come hunting the football. Langford and Brzezinski pounding on the ball trying to free it. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by AT&T, in long-distance services, information and network systems, telephones and computers, AT&T is the right choice. With Bob Trumpy, this is Don Cricky at the Orange Bowl in Miami. A hot, humid day in South Florida. Bills lead 7-3. to three. Go to the run on short yardage. Al Byram, that big pullback from Mississippi Valley, the rookie, drives at the Dolphin defense and gets a Buffalo first down. Gain of one, first down. Jets holding that 14-0 lead. Dallas looking to upend the Washington Redskins. The Skins have not lost. Nor have the Chicago Bears, who are still scoreless. Rams come back to take a lead in Atlanta now. Kansas City up on Cleveland. Jim Kelly on first down and 10. Throwing a catch to his tight end out to the 49-yard line. A gain of about seven yards on the play. Metz Lars came in from the Seattle Seahawks. He's a target. He's bigger than you are, Trumpy. 6'8". A lot younger, too. That's the important part. Second and two. So far, Kelly has had tremendous time to throw the football. If this Dolphin defense against the pass has had one big consistent problem is lack of pass rush. Jerome Foster now in at nose tackle, barely get off the line of scrimmage. Henry Bulla pacing the sidelines as the Bills are moving the ball again now. Greg Bell with a change of pace move on second and short. Gets close to the first down. They'll spot the ball at about the Miami 48 where he needed to go. Jackie Ship was on the tackle. Bills are probably going to their rookie number one running back from number one draft choice, Ronnie Harmon from Iowa, who's only run the ball twice this year. Only caught one pass. That was for a touchdown. John, you can see players from both teams out there on the field, hands on hips, gasping for breath. There's a breeze here in the Orange Bowl, but it is very humid, and you tire, you drain quickly. It's really a strong wind right now. Bill's moving into it, but the temperature is in the 90s and the humidity in the 70s. Bill's lead 7 to 3, second quarter. Greg Bell, big block from Jones. And Bell on first down is to the Miami 43 yard line. Jerome Foster at defensive end made the stop. Bill's defense getting a rest. In the first quarter, they were on the field much of the time and showed it. Uh, the Dolphins now have made the changes on their defensive front too. Betters is there in there. Jerome Foster is in there. So they're trying to give everybody a rest they can. But I would recommend not running this a lot because this does nothing but wear out your offense. They can get yards straight ahead. Go with it as long as it works. 
and then in desperation you could go with the sweep, Don. Second and five, back to the run. A straight ahead carry is close to the Dolphin 40. Ricky Moore taking it right at the Miami Dolphins. Foster again was on the tackle along with Jackie Shep. We've done a lot of games here, though, Trump, over the years, and you see it time and again. Teams wear down, they know they're tired, and bang, a critical turnover in the fourth quarter. Unfortunately for the Dolphins, though, today, they've been the ones with the turnovers. Two. Shula teams have dominated Buffalo. Under Shula, the Dolphins are 29 and 3 over the years against the Bills. Third down, a long two. Kelly swings it out. Metzlars gets it. He's not going to get there. Good defensive play by John Oferdahl. He was playing the tight end all the way. Metzlars took the ball. And where they spot it, it'll be a yard short of a first down. So it's fourth and one for the Bills. It would have been so easy for Metzlars. You can see the whole thing. The 56, he anticipates Metzlars coming across there. There would have been no problem for him whatsoever to go two yards deeper. It wouldn't have hurt the pattern at all that it picked up a first down. As it is, Norwood must come in and punt. Excuse me, John Kidd must come in and punt. Season to go, John Kidd with 33 punts. Out of bounds inside or downed inside the opponent's 20. When the NFL record book with those 33, this year he hasn't done it once. He'll be trying to hear. He's a long ball hitter from Northwestern, John Kidd. Averaging just under 43 a punt. Now the Bills call a timeout with 6.02 to play in this rather quick-moving first half. So the Bills still leading 7-3. to three. We'll be back to the Orange Bowl after this. Back at the Orange Bowl, fourth down. The Bills have pulled their punt team, and they're going for it on fourth and one. At the Miami 38. Hits back to Greg Bell. Did he get there? I don't no. think he did. The Dolphins stop him. One of their rare big defensive plays of this season, but they get Greg Bell on a gamble. So Hank Bull and the Bills, and you have to applaud them for it. This team needs a win after all these close losses. They gambled earlier on fourth down. They got there, and there's a player down for Buffalo. Bell is down. Why go wide? They've gotten great yardage straight up the middle, Don. Sometimes when you take a timeout, coaches can outsmart themselves. That time looked like Brown on the initial tackle. He was stopped dead in his tracks. Those fourth downs can keep momentum going. It can also turn momentum against against you. Now Miami, with very few stops by their defense, got to feel good going on the field. Greg Bell might only be winded. They're not looking at his legs. Here's a player who played only 23 college games at Notre Dame because of a series of injuries. But he's been very productive for the Buffalo Bills. Now while we have a break in the action here, let's go to NFL 86 and Bob Costas. Bob? All right, Don, both the Chiefs and Browns are 3-2, and two, and they're even at 7 in the second quarter at Cleveland after Todd Blackledge hits Stephon Page for a Kansas City touchdown. Bernie Kozar comes back with this 16-yard swing pass to Ernest Biner, so they're tied at 7 in the second quarter. Back to Cricky and Trumpy. Thank you, Bob. Greg Bell being helped off the field now. Wasn't a knee or an ankle, could have been no. a... He has had problems with a groin pull for several weeks, and it looks like the way he's dragging his leg may be the same thing again. It's his left leg that he, he can't really function very good with. It looked like his foot may have slipped right at the end of this. You see 51 Brown make contact. Not there. When he gets hit here, it looks like his legs might have gotten... One is held. Might have been the other one was pulled. We'll get you an injury report as soon as we can from the Buffalo bench. 5.53 to go now. First half, and the Dolphins take over, trailing 7-3. to three. Marino running out of time. He's down back to the 28-yard line. He stacked himself on that one, just trying to pivot. He plays with very big knee braces. You don't hear a lot about it, but Marino has bad knees. And I noticed that the Dolphins are keeping Bruce Hardy, the tight end, in for pass protection. You're right, that one's totally on Dan Marino. He went to jump out of the way, use a John Elway move on him, fooled himself, a loss of nine yards. So now Marino into a deep pass situation on second down and 19. 
Jackson, the Marx Brothers deep. Marino on the spread out. He's in trouble. Gets a moment. Fires and a completed pass out to the 43-yard line. It'll be about six yards short of a first down, but it was a 14-yard gainer. Johnson did a great job here. He was well covered. When, when a quarterback rolls one way or the other, you only have half the field to work with. You can't throw it back in the middle. But the one thing the receivers can do is come straight back towards the quarterback, which Dan Johnson does. You can see him going right back towards the quarterback. Romes has got him covered, but Romes can't reach around him without it being interference. Well, that's a nice pass and catch. Neither to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser, most valuable player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. Third down, a long five for Miami. Buffalo leads the game seven to three. Second quarter, 4.30 to play in it. Defender fell down. Rodney Bellinger went to the turf. Cutting back of the ball was James Pruitt, the rookie. It's a first down, Dolphins. Down to the Buffalo 37-yard line. Two big catches by Pruitt now. Excellent job. Looked like the Buffalo Bills were coming with the safety blitz. Again, you see Bayless right there at the line of scrimmage. He's charged with covering 22, Tony Nathan. But when Bayless trips just ever so slightly, Pruitt hangs on. Second catch of the day. Most of Marino's throws are timed for the release just before Bruce Smith gets to him. Smith has been on him but hasn't sacked him yet. Marino again, lots of time. Home run ball to Nat Moore. He can't get it. It'll be second down and 10 at the Buffalo 37-yard line. Rome's in coverage. You can see the veteran Nat Moore trying to draw interference. Nat in his 13th year from Florida has four touchdowns receptions already this year. Did you see him slow down at the end of that pattern, Don? He was trying to draw a bump from Charles Rome's, but oh, Jets pouring it on New England here, Don. Patriots totally dominated the Jets 20 to 6 in the second game of the season. Might as well have been 40 to 6, though. Jets were never even vaguely in it. Green Bay stays in that Vinny Tustaverde ball. The winless Packers losing again. Second down and 10. Three man rush. This killed the Bills a week ago, and they against. The Jets, they went to a three-man rush with the lead in the closing moments of the game, and O'Brien took him right down the field for the winning score. That more 19-yard catch, just a simple pattern. You go down, turn around. This ball should be coming right at us. There's Nathan. He'll draw the linebacker out of the line of sight for Marino. Almost an excellent job by Marr, 54 to get his hand on it, but Nat Moore makes an outstanding catch, another big third-down conversion. Marino will kill you if he gets three seconds. That's all he needs. Buffalo's been giving him five with a three-man rush. Another throw. And another drop ball by Lorenzo Hampton. It'll be second down and ten from the 18-yard line. 2.51 to play in the first half. The Bills holding to a 7-3 to three lead. There's a guy they expect a lot of things out for Buffalo. Gerald Talley, tall, rangy, can move. He might have Hampton all day in coverage. Something the Miami Dolphins will try to explore. Buffalo has a great deal of faith in Tally to stay with just about any running back you can find in the game. Moreno has some big numbers here, Bob. 14 to 21, 170 yards. No turnovers, no interceptions. That's big. But they've fumbled the ball away twice, said the Dolphins. Now on second and ten, here's Marino. Oh, and a catch. First and goal, Miami. Mark Duper comes off the flank. Day short of the defense. Dolphin receivers coming back at the ball a lot when Marino gets time, and there's that eight-man coverage. They're just coming right back at Marino, and he fires that fastball in there. Guy Frazier was the closest man in coverage. Watch Marino. He looks all the way to his left, comes all the way back to his right. Duper's an outlet receiver, and Frazier knocks him out of bounds, but another, well, they're going to measure it. Looks like a first-down pickup. Marino's getting plenty of time, and also the zone coverage by Buffalo allows these these uh, little gifted wide receivers of the Dolphins to kind of move around in there. Ah, that's first down. It's another long drive. Dolphins first drive was 13 plays and they got three points. They ran 11 plays and then turned the ball over. This one's gone on for quite a while too. 
You recall that this drive started when the Bills on a fourth and one went for it. Greg Bell was stopped short, left the game with a muscle pull. Dolphins took over. And now they've moved the ball on the right arm of Marino down to the Buffalo eight-yard line. First down and goal, Miami. Buffalo seven, Miami three. Eighth play of the drive coming up here. Bills could be blitzing here. Here they come. Run. Nathan, stop. Tony Nathan on the carry. Ran right into Dwight Drain. Weak safety on the blitz. Nathan had no place to go whatsoever. But at least they did get the handoff. Second and goal from the seven yard. Awful tough to keep Marino and the Dolphins out of the end zone from this close in. They did a while ago, you remember. When the fullback Davenport fumbled the ball on a third and goal play. Ball was recovered in the Buffalo end zone by Hamby for a touchback. Now the Dolphins are knocking again, looking to take the lead. They trail 7-3 to three, late in the second quarter. Play is whistled dead before the snap as the two-minute warning is given. They had one second left on the clock. Marino says, wait a minute, the clock didn't expire. And the ref says, wait a minute, it's just a two-minute warning. Don't panic, Danny. Don't panic. And so we'll be back to the heat of the Orange Bowl right after this. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy back at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Two minutes to play in the first half where the Buffalo Bills are leading the Dolphins 7-3. to three. Don, this is the toughest area of the field for a coach to call a play. The inline, of course, helps the defense. They only have to drop uh, something like 16, maybe 17 yards. So they don't have to worry about deep. This is very difficult for an offense to function. you got to come with something out of the ordinary here in order to get it done. You need a, a pick of somebody, a scrape to uh, free a wide receiver or a tight end out in the flat. Marino watchers have said after the last two games they were the poorest two games for him since his senior season at Pitt. But he's sharp today. Dan Marino going for 200 yards passing in the first half, but he's not had the Dolphins in the end zone. Now he releases. He's intercepted. The Bills pick it off. Coming now with the ball is the veteran cornerback Charles Rome, and so Miami turns it over in the Buffalo end zone a second time. Third corner over the half for the Dolphins. That's shocking. The ball was intended for Clayton. Watch the coverage. Clayton bottom right at the 10. He goes down. He's got Rome's on him. Now Clayton doesn't even look like the primary receiver. I think it's Tony Nathan. When the ball is thrown, Clayton gives up, gives up on the pattern. Rome's is right there in front. He was certainly open, and Marino hits him. Third turnover of the day for the Dolphins. This one, I think you got to put on Clayton. I don't think this is a bad choice by Dan Marino. Clayton's got to continue the pattern. He quit on it. He just stopped. How far can you go when you're at the back of the end zone? NFL plays here when the Seahawks battle the Raiders. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL 86. Back at the Orange Bowl, Rob Riddick just called on to carry the ball for the first time. Rips off a 14-yard gain for the Bills and gets it out to the 34-yard line after the interception by Charles Romes in the end zone. Interception of Dan Marino. Uh, looks like the steam has gone right out of the Dolphin defense. Here's the primary receiver. That's Emily Tony Martin. Nathan. Watch the play that he runs. It's a delay inside. He's the primary receiver, but Marv has great coverage. So Clayton is like, he's not even a receiver. But still, when you're down in that goal line area, the responsibility of the receiver is look back at the quarterback, find some spot open third turnover of the day by the Dolphins and the 14 yard run comes back and Jones was called for holding and so the ball is set back to the Bills 10 yard line you wonder why Buffalo just doesn't open up the passing game against the team that's giving up almost 270 yards a game to the pass last in the league it runs again apparently coach Fuller is going to be happy with his seven to three lead Dolphins take a timeout Don try to salvage something out of this first half there is so much. There, it is very, very difficult to balance a football, football team to make it successful. And when the offense turns the ball over thir three times in the first half, pressure goes on the defense once again. 
Buffalo has only 47 yards passing in the first half. Miami 200. Well, the third quarter earnings report is going to be released tomorrow. 7-3, to three, while the Jets continue to dominate at New England over the favored Patriots. Dallas holding that 10-0 lead on Washington. The Bears finally get a score as they look to go 6-0. and Atlanta's come back to take a lead over the L.A. Rams now. Chiefs and the Browns tie. Detroit with a 14-point advantage on winless Green Bay. New Orleans up on Indianapolis and Tampa Bay leading St. Louis. Vinny Testaverde is the prize this year. Quarterback for number one ranked Miami of Florida. The last shall be first in the draft. He's worth waiting for. Jim Kelly now will put it up. Fires up the middle to Rob Riddick. Gets a block and sprints straight ahead. And he's going to have a first. Fumble. Fumbles the ball. And the Dolphins have it at the 37-yard line of Buffalo with 1.25 to play. Jerome Foster gets the ball, so the Bills cough it up for the first time. Riddick has had a bad habit of carrying that ball loose. He makes a nice reception. Kelly's looking all over the place here. Finally finds Riddick right in the middle. At times, Riddick carries the thing out there like it's a, a newspaper, and there he does again. He survives the first hit. Ship number 50, hits him. Bud Brown also on the assist. Langford there. And Jerome Foster, the nose tackle, gives the Miami offense another chance. Dolphins with the three turnovers, as you see, but now a big break for Miami. And with 1.25 to play in the first half, Marino gets another crack at it. Running away from the pass rush. Incomplete at the 25-yard line. <laughs> First of the day, now Miami has a chance, but Miami's had several chances. They've been on the plus side of the field here against the Bills the entire first half. Got only three points to show for it. Never has a team coached by Don Shula been one and four at the outset of a season. Right now, the Dolphins struggling to get into the end zone. They've not gotten points yet today other than the field goal early in the game by Reves. Buffalo leading seven to three. Second down and 10 with 1.18 to play in the half. Throw and a catch to Dan Johnson. He's to the 30-yard line, and the clock runs. Both teams with two timeouts remaining, and Miami takes one now. Third down and three will arise when the Dolphins go back into formation. I'm from the 30-yard line now. I think the Dolphins have a lot better chance to try to get the ball in the end zone than they do from the nine. It's third down. The first thing they got to do is pick up the first down, and then they've got good working area for their speedy receivers. You can run a lot more of your offense from the 25 than you can from the nine. Bills substituting on defense, trying to keep fresh troops in there. Coach Buller putting a lot of new defensive people in. His defense has been out much. NFL 86 is coming up at halftime as we have 109 to play in the first half. Sunday number six of the 1986 NFL season, the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins standing at one and four. Somebody said Trump about the only people that aren't convinced the Bills have a standout young football team are the Bills. They're still not sure. Kelly has even said that. Tell you what though, losing is a hard habit to break. And this team has suffered two back-to-back -back two and 14 football seasons. They're in the midst of a 19-game losing streak on the road. And Kelly has never been with a loser. In high school, in college, and in the U.S. Football League, he ate other people up. He doesn't like this at all. He's also never played in the NFL before this year. He's a rookie in it. Six DBs for Buffalo, Don. Third and four. Bills look like they're going to blitz. They've gotten away from that three-man rush that Marina was killing. They do blitz. There's a long ball into the end zone. It's going to be touchdown. Mark Duper and Dan Marino beat the blitz. A 30-yard touchdown throw in Miami goes in front, 9 to 7. We'll see this all the way. Duper's third catch. He's at the top of the screen, and from the five yards off the line of scrimmage, he's got Bellinger beat. All Marino has to do is make sure the ball is up in the air enough that any adjustment Duper has to make, he can make it, keep it inbounds in the end zone, and it's 
an easy six points. Duper's third touchdown catch and Marino's 13th touchdown pass of the season. Extra point is good, so the Buffalo turnover was critical as the Dolphins turn it into the go-ahead touchdown. With 103 to play in the first half, it's a 10-7 game Miami. You can see the pressure once again drain right in the face of Dan Marino, but all he's got to do with that strong arm of his, get it up in the air. I think Hank Bullard would like to have that defensive call back. Rod Bellinger, the beaten corner. Nice concentration on the football. Perfectly thrown by Dan Marino. I can't believe, though, that Kelly just doesn't come out and just wing the ball all over at this Miami defense. Everybody else has, and it's moved it for 35 points a game on the average. A, a not very good San Diego team, the season is proving. Got 500 yards and 50 points against the Dolphins, throwing the ball virtually every down. Well, one thing you could do at halftime is say, wait a minute, this is what we're going to do. There's nothing wrong with making changes. Couple of new kickoff returners in now for Buffalo. Willie Broughton and Ronnie Harmon are in. Robays now has the wind at his back. Let's see if he can put it out of the end zone. The way Scott Norwood was kicking it out of the end zone for the Buffalo Bills. the ball and really puts a charge into it with the wind at his back and Broughton watches it go out and so with 103 to play in the first half Jim Kelly brings the offense out and he'll be throwing I would think maybe the wind is stronger than we suspect up here Don maybe that's one of the reasons why the Bills have not thrown the ball incidentally in Buffalo's only win against the St. Louis Cardinals he only threw the ball 10 times completed six and we haven't had a punt in this first half. Right. Jim Kelly comes in with an 81 quarterback rating, 59% completions. He's thrown for six touchdowns this season. He's been intercepted six times, but three of the interceptions late in the game have led directly to defeats. Rob Riddick runs the ball. Riddick fighting to get out of bounds. Cannot. He pops it up again. They're ruling him down. Let's get him out of the game. This is two runs and two fumbles. That's not what you're looking for. He does carry it loosely. Not against his body. They're not saying he was down. I think they're saying he was stopped. Inbound. Yeah, problem in Miami. Another thing a lot of players don't realize, and he's not had a problem fumbling with it this year, is the fact that the ball is slippery in this humidity. From behind the offense. Now watch the way Riddick has that ball hanging out there on the side. You see that? That's the formula for disaster. That's a fumble. That's a fumble, Don. Now, in the corner of the officials, right back to Riddick, two arms on the ball, and so the Bills are going to run out the clock. That's going to risk putting it up and getting another interception. We'll watch again the Riddick non fumble. He's been a terrific player, Riddick, when he's gotten his chance. This ball is slippery in the humidity, and some people come in and don't realize that. But Brown is there. Langford, that ball is loose. I think it hit the ground to get loose, though. That, that means it's that, dead. Yeah, but he's got to be down. The ball has to be down. The, the ball he, has the to be, he has to be down, and then the ball hit the ground. That's a fumble. Now, Don Shula takes his Dolphins to the locker room with a 10 to 7 lead. Not pleased with the overall effort, but he has to be with a three point lead. They've had their problems this season leading it all. Three turnovers in the first half and leading. You're right. They got to be very happy. Buffalo, you got to wonder about how long their defense can hold up. Miami's time of possession in the first half, I think, is a lot more than Buffalo. So you certainly hope that your defense doesn't wear out for the second half. Despite all the yardage the Dolphins have allowed to the opponent's pass, Kelly has not thrown the ball a great deal in the first half. He has hit virtually everything he's thrown, but he hasn't gone deep very often. Marino has, particularly after that last turnover when he got into the end zone to Mark Duper for the go-ahead touchdown. So the Dolphins, who were favored by just over a touchdown in the local Miami papers, hold to a three-point lead. Miami has 
historically has been a lot tougher in the second half of the Orange Bowl, and Buffalo has been the NFL's best at stopping scoring in the third quarter. So at halftime, it is 10 to 7, Miami in the lead. Now let's go to Bob Costas at NFL 86 in New York. Here's Bob. Passing for the Bills while Marino had well over 200 and passed them to a halftime lead. He's seven of eight, though. Yeah, well, that's indication all the more that he should be throwing it. Nobody stopped him when he's thrown it. Well, one of the things I think that uh, Buffalo is going to have to settle on, they have Bob Leahy as the pass coordinator on their offense, and they have Jim Ringo as the run coordinator on the offense. I don't think that works. You need one guy that has to answer to the uh, head coach, Hank Bulla, as to what the play is going to be. You can lobby your way into... Uh, a lot of third down and long yardage situations are the short end of a lot of scores. You need one coach who's responsible for that offense other than the head coach. Dan Marino coming off a bad two weeks in which he threw two, seven interceptions total in two games, had just one today. And when they gave him time, he was effective. Bills mixed up the pass rush. They, he moved the ball against him when they were going to the three-man rush. Then they went back to blitzing him, and finally he did burn the blitz for the go-ahead touchdown. Now the Bills will open it up. They'll be getting the ball to start the third quarter. Ronnie Harmon is back, along with Broughton. Bills will be against the wind to start this third quarter, and it's still a pretty considerable breeze out there. It might have a, have a bearing on just how much or how deep the Buffalo Bills might want to throw the football. moves into the ball and with the wind at his back drills it downfield and it'll be out of bounds and he'll kick it again from his 30. Don, look how slow everyone's walking back to their position. Trying to conserve every ounce of strength that they possibly can. This is oppressive heat and humidity. Both teams are really wearing down from the heat and humidity. You never get used to this, even though you practice down here. You know the feeling, so you know how far you can go, but you never get used to it. Some unlikely scores. The Jets laying waste to the favored Patriots. Dallas in the process of sending Washington down to its first loss. Land the Rams still in a tight game at halftime. Two prime contenders in the NFC West. Kansas City and Cleveland, both three and two teams, move into a tie now in the third quarter. They've been tied, actually, and Detroit now up 14-7 on the Packers, who need Vinny Testaverde as much as any team, about as badly as they need oxygen, really. How about Brian Bosworth or Cornelius Bennett, though? They, some they don't get players. you in the end zone. Here is a kick down the field. Walter Broughton takes it eight yards deep and is wisely counseled not to bring it out. So the Bills will start from their 20. Jim Kelly and the offense come out. We've not seen Greg Bell since late in the second quarter when in a fourth and one play, he tried for a first down on a run, didn't get it, but did get a muscle pull on his leg and went out. Riddick came in and had problems holding onto the ball. Turnovers, it's three to one. Miami's turned it over three times. The Bills just once, but the Dolphins lead the game 10 to seven. Bills start the game just as they started the first half. Started the second half just like the first half. Two tight ends, one running back, two wide receivers. Good play fake by Kelly and a dump off. There is a completed pass to the rookie tight end Butch Roll from Michigan State. And he's all the way out to the 40-yard line. Our producer, Glenn Adamo, just in contact with the Bills bench, is informed that Greg Bell won't be back in the second half. Our di director today is John Libretto, as we have 14.25 to play in the first in the third quarter. Greg Bell has aggravated that groin pull on that fourth down attempt, so he's out, so it's basically up to Riddick now on that halfback spot. Riddick, the lone setback, as the Bills get a big gainer, a 20-yarder on first down, throwing the ball. Another throw, and Metzlars has it tipped away. Oferdahl recovering, coming back and just tipping the ball before it got to the big tight end, Pete Metzlars. Don, I, I also notice in the defense, you can see that 
Jay Brophy is in at linebacker number 53. He comes there on the blitz. Alfredal does a great job of just reading the quarterback, tipping the ball away. I also, I'm trying to find Jackie Ship on the sideline for the Miami Dolphins. I don't see him anywhere. We have no report from the Dolphin bench as to injury, but he's not out there to begin this second half, Don. No, he is not. Moving linebackers around, Jay Brophy, who played at Miami of Florida, is in. He steps into the gap across from the tight end. Bills with two tight ends now. Burkett goes in motion, is on second and ten. Kelly takes a look, throws a strike downfield. It is intercepted at the 39-yard line. Picked off by the Miami Dolphins. Coming back with the ball is Donovan Rhodes, the free safety, making his first start for Miami. And he has the ball back to the Buffalo 34-yard line. Oh, that was a great interception. The ball was intended for Andre Reed. It'll come at the top right of the picture. Donovan Rose, the free safety, just activated, tips the ball, and is able to hang on. Now the turnovers, three for Miami, two for Buffalo, and he carries the ball like the Sunday morning newspaper, too. 27-yard return. Miami once again with great field position for their offense. Rose played in Canada for five years. They thought he was going to sign with Washington, so his wife enrolled in law school there at Georgetown and tried out for the Washington Redskins Redskinette cheerleaders, and she made it. She's actually rooting for the Redskins on Sunday while well, he's down here playing in Miami. Here's a handoff to Woody Bennett. He's seen very little of the ball today. In fact, I believe that's his first carry as he gets it down inside the 35-yard line for a gain of only two. For Janik, a nice tackle there. Bennett is a big, strong dude for Janik. Able to almost with one hand on his jersey get him to the ground. Very little game, about a yard. For Janik, an eighth round draft choice out of Notre Dame, out of high school. He was the number one rated high school linebacker in the country. I questioned his speed a little bit, but not the way he strikes. Came in and made the Bills with an inter squad performance against the Browns when he had 13 tackles in the summer. Marino with penalty markers down, free ball, and very nearly intercepted. Daryl Talley makes a diving play on the ball as the markers down at the Bills' 30. This is going to be pass interference either against the Bills or Miami. It's against the Bills. Personal foul against the Bills. Here's Fred Wyant. Personal foul. Fifth to the face, number 56, first down. You, Daryl Telly. First guy to go down with heat exhaustion today is the Miami Dolphin, Jackie Ship, suffering from heat exhaustion. He's back on the field now. Doesn't look like he's in the uh, mood the to play, though, does he? <laughs> Dolphins got those wet towels over the head. Now on the penalty call against the Bills, the Dolphins get it inside the Buffalo 20 after the interception of Kelly. Reverse. Puts back Dan Marino. He's in trouble. Going on the run, and he throws it away very wisely. Well defended. Excellent. Lots of action, but it turns into a piece of junk. Excellent job by Buffalo. Not, it didn't bite on it at all. It's first to Hampton. Then back to Clayton, who has a nice block on Daryl Talley. And then Marino says, this is a bust. Here, somebody in the third row. Take care of this thing. Between NBC television and NBC radio, Trump, this is about 14th game of the season. We're close to a full season. We see every team try gadget plays, as they're called in the league. Only one makes it work every time. Denver. Denver. You're right. Everything Denver does ends up in six points. Marino, a throw and a drop ball by usually sure-handed Tony Nathan at the 13-yard line. Rod Bellinger was covering. Bellinger's not tall. He's 5'8". He's a hitter, though, in that national championship game with Nebraska here at the Orange Bowl in 83. He put the Heisman Trophy winner from Nebraska right on the bench with a shot to the leg. Uh, this Mike is, Rozier. This is where Miami has really had problems today. Inside the 20-yard line, not function well at all. Buffalo again coming with one, two, three, four, five. Move so I can see one more guy over there. See if he's a linebacker. Five, six defensive backs, one linebacker, and a three-man rush, which is what Marino's beaten today. They're down. Ten to go. 
Reno loops it down, and it's not close to a completion, so the Dolphins will send their field goal unit out. Marino's, Marino's going right over the receiver, too, saying, what are you running? Come on. That's the rookie, James Pruitt. Now, he's made two big catches, but it appeared that he ran the wrong pattern there, so Rovay's in for the attempt. There, he's talking to Pruitt. Rivet's hit one field goal today, a short one to open the scoring. Coming into the game, he was just three of seven on field goal attempts out of Tennessee. He can hit it a mile. This is a chip shot with the wind behind him. Spins it up and good. And so the Dolphins extend their lead to 13 to 7. We'll be back with Miami's kickoff after this. There's a fire-breathing creature Chrysler has imported from Japan. Conquest TSI. The intercooled turbo coupe built by Mitsubishi. So hot it'll smoke the 300ZX and RX-7. Conquest TSI. Now at your Chrysler dealer. At Raytheon Company, we believe that success comes from mastering the fundamentals. That's why we admire people like Tom Kite. People who are dedicated to perfecting the fundamentals. Practicing them day in and day out until they become second nature. So whether it's in electronics, aviation, appliances, or energy, Raytheon works hard on the fundamentals. Because at Raytheon, we believe quality starts with fundamentals. Everyone needs a little adventure in their life. So why not enter the great Stanley Tool Adventure? You could win a Chevy S10 Blazer to get you away from it all. A mercury-powered Larson boat to put you in the middle of nature. And $1,000 in Stanley Tools to help you do things right. Hey, the Blazer, the boat, the motor, the tools, you could win it all in the great Stanley Adventure. I think this dock needs a little more work. I got a lot of Stanley Tools. Today's game is brought to you by Chrysler Plymouth. We're working together to be the best. By Radio Shack, a division of Tandy Corporation. And by Prestone, makers of Prestone 2 antifreeze. Don't push your luck. Change it with fresh Prestone. Don Schill and the Dolphins on the sideline after extending their lead on the Reves field goal to 13 to 7, capitalizing on an interception of Jim Kelly and turning it into points. Looks like Jackie Ship is back and fine. Don't know what they did for him at halftime, but report from the bench heat exhaustion. We'll see how much he plays. Guys can go a little soft in the head in his seat, too, can't they? They think they see Oasis and oh water yeah. out there. Oh, yeah, all that stuff. It's scary. Again, with the wind at his back, Reves drills it into the end zone. And now uh, the Buffalo offense comes out. Let's go back to NFL 86, where Mr. Bob Costas is standing by. Bob? Thank you, Mr. Don Crickey. In the third quarter in Cleveland, Bernie Kozar throws his second touchdown pass of the day. It's a six-yarder to the great tight end, Ozzie Newsom. It follows a 44-yard Kozar to Reggie Langhorn pass to set it up. And so the Browns take a 14-7 lead in the third. Back to the Orange Bowl. Thank you, Bob, where the Bills are ready to go first and 10 with 12.32 to play in the third quarter. Buffalo's first possession of the quarter, you'll remember, an interception of Kelly. They're working into a strong win. The Bills will have it at their back in the fourth quarter. Andre Reed comes in motion. They go to the run, and here's Riddick. Taking on some Miami tacklers for not very much. He's out to the 23-yard line. Riddick's missed almost two full seasons. He missed all of the 85 season with injuries. Ninth round draft choice from Millersville. Don, uh, Bills come out in nothing but a running formation. Two tight ends, two running backs, and Andre Reed, the only wide receiver. So your question, why aren't they throwing it, still not answered. They're running it. They're going to throw it right now. On second down and six from their 24-yard line. See that? Right to the pass. Here's Riddick getting ahead to the 30. He's got a first down. Kelly has now thrown six touchdowns to the Buffalo Bill and seven interceptions. Offerdahl makes the tackle. Bills aren't 
out of this game by a long shot, Ooh, trailing by, by just six, six points. Have to play. They want to stay with their standard offense. This is a nice sweep run by the Buffalo Bills. Out in front gets Jim Richer. Kind of misses everybody, but uh, Riddick is impressive when he hangs onto the football, that is. Well, he's not a fumbler by normally. But so harken back to that humidity. There's a handoff. Riddick up the middle. Dolphins going for the ball. More and more teams in the league as we see week after week are teaching go for the football. Denver's the best at it. Former Bill player and coach Joel Collier. He wants people putting their fist on the ball when it comes in, and they free it up a lot. Well, but it doesn't help, though, when Riddick carries the ball out like he's uh, got an apple in his hand. That's a football. you got to tuck it in underneath your arm. It looks like he's carrying the ball now with two hands on it. Reed comes to the right. They're playing Burkett, the tall receiver at the top. Very tight. Kelly dumps it off. It's incomplete. That's a sack. They're ruling it a sack back at the 20-yard line. Jerome Foster got him. So on second down and seven, a big loss on the sack by the Dolphins, and now the Bills will operate from their 20. Third and long, long yardage. From behind the offense, you see the pressure. Offerdahl comes. He kind of makes Kelly throw it up there, and then Jerome Foster gets it. Now's the time when I think Miami will go with lots of blitzes. Lots of blitzes. Try to disrupt the offense of the Bills as best they can. Kelly, as you know, Trump is a very mobile quarterback, had his best success in the U.S. Football League sprinting out. We see Marino, despite his infirm knees, doing that more and more as the whole pocket is under pressure so much against these huge rushers. Third and 20. Throwing a catch to Riddick. He's got moves. But Riddick has stiffened up and straightened out of bounds at the 34-yard line, short of where he needed to be by six or seven yards. And the Bills have to punt the ball into the wind. That was a 14-yard catch. But watch him drop off. Total zone everywhere. You don't cover a man. You cover an area. You read the quarterback's eyes. When he throws it, react to the ball. All you're trying to do is just keep him from getting that first down marker. And Renee Thompson makes the tackle. Believe it or not, with 9.54 to play in the third quarter, this is the first punt of the day. John Kidd was out one. They pulled him then and went for it on fourth and one and didn't get there. The Bills wish it was the second punt of the day. Ball is down to the 33-yard line. Derek Burroughs comes down to get it for the Bills with 9.45 to play. Just a 33-yard punt. And so, Miami gets it back when we return to the Orange Bowl. Tide has turned markedly in this game. Late in the second quarter, the Dolphins took the lead on a touchdown throw, and now they're very much in command, although leading by just six points. They've had great field position all day long, Don, and once again... Marino looking for more, and Clayton's wide open. Down inside the 30-yard line of the Bills. And the thing eventually is with good field position by the Miami Dolphins offense, they're going to get it down the field. Clayton and Duper are not going to be shut out of many football games. Great pass protection that time by the offensive line. That was easy pickings by Marino. 39-yard reception by Clayton. And I think the Bills' defense is wearing out a little bit. I think you're right. Bills working with Bellinger and Romes at the corners. Martin Bayless and Steve Freeman are the safeties. And Marino smells blood. He's been firing with a lot of effect. Big rush against him. He loops it up, and it's incomplete. There's a penalty marker down, though, in the Bills' secondary. Looks like Tony Perjanic may be the guy who is going to be called here. I think it's pass interference once again against Buffalo. And that's an indication they're tired. Defensive hold. That's a, a true indication that they're tired. Hank Bull has bulked up a little bit. Good guy, though. Great guy. Defensive holding. Boyarski was the man with pressure on Dan Marino. They've switched a lot of defensive people. You see Bruce Smith now coming in. Boyarski and Plater in on the defensive front. 
Now the ball is positioned inside the 25-yard line. First down and 10. Marino looking to put up more. Oh, what a kick. George Combe with the head-on shot. Now this from NBC News. We're standing by for an NBC News update from Reykjavik, Iceland. Jerry Boyarski, the nose tackle with that hit on hit on Woody Bennett. Now a man jumps offside. Bruce Smith, free play for Marino. Another marker down to Bill's secondary. Coming back at the ball and not getting it. Miami Dolphins, Mark Clayton. Things are kind of falling apart. NBC News special report. Here is Tom Brokaw in Iceland. This has been an NBC News special report. John Crickey with Bob Trumpy back at the Orange Bowl in Miami with the Dolphins have just gone in for a touchdown. Lorenzo Hampton diving over the top from a couple of yards out. We'll show it to you momentarily. Only the third rushing touchdown of this season for the Dolphins as they now extend their lead to a very substantial 20 to 7. Hampton, while we were away, makes an outstanding catch here out in the flat from behind the offense on his a rear end. He catches it. Darrell Talley finally gets him down. Now watch this dive. Their third rushing touchdown, and Hampton's got them all. Into the end zone. Let's measure that one. 20 to 7. Dolphins over the Bills. And we'll be back with another Miami kickoff after this. The Buffalo bench as the Bills fall behind 20 to 7 now. In the third quarter, Miami set to kick it off again. Reves moving in, a four-step move on the ball, then the high spinner with the wind behind it. Stay there. And again, the Bills are unable to return. They're playing at the tough end to take kickoffs as they're driven deep with the prevailing wind. But Bills will have that wind at their back in the fourth quarter with 7.43 still to play, though, in the third quarter. And the Bills need something from Jim Kelly right now. The uh, time of possession is surprising, very surprising. Miami, I think, statistics-wise, has dominated the football game. The turnovers, of course, not Buffalo. Lots of chances. Made good on only one. Ronnie Harmon in the backfield. Kelly throws on the run. The ball is taken by Riddick, and he fights to get out of bounds at the 28-yard line. A gain of about seven yards where they'll spot the ball. William Judson defending on the play. On Bill Stan with their game plan down 20 to 7 still running the play action passes trying to get the backs in the flat haven't really thrown the ball deep yet today Second and two. Well, the Bills have speed at the wide receiver position Merkett goes wide left Andre Reed on the right flank Jerry Butler's not been in there out in the second quarter last week with a concussion pitch back Harmon the rookie Caught from behind by John Offerdahl, the best Miami Dolphin player of the 86 season, a rookie linebacker. Did an excellent job of stringing this play out to the sideline, allowed the pursuit to catch up. Whenever inside linebacker makes a stop on a sweep like that, you got to give some credit to the outside linebacker. That's Bob Brzezinski, number 59, who was able to string that play out. Offerdahl makes the ta tackle. And Hampton is getting a little help there from the trainer. Third down and two. Here's Kelly looking at Metzlars. First down to the big guy, and he's out to the 43-yard line. As Metzlars comes off the line of scrimmage, that time Offerdahl was a step behind. And the Bills got a substantial gain, a good four. 15 yards and a first down on third and two. Play action again. Metzlars with those big, long arms. That ball's thrown low looked like Jackie ship number 50 was the man that's supposed to be there in coverage but Brown makes a stop 15 yard game Buffalo first down Bills if they can take it down and take it in they're right back in the game and they'll work the fourth quarter with the wind at their back Miami's defense now digging in looking to come after Jim Kelly 
He's throwing more in the second half. He's been intercepted once. Good screen out to Rob Riddick. Locker there, and Riddick rips it open, and he's all the way down to the Miami 39-yard line. Maybe Buffalo's best offensive play of the game. But Brown again on the tackle. That's the safety, the strong safety making the tackle. There were several missed tackles by the Dolphins. This is set up well by Buffalo. Very well. It's got to be sold. The play action fake. You see people out in front of him. Will Wolford out there. Excellent blocks, but then Riddick really does a pretty good job by himself. 26, Donovan Rose misses him. Riddick in pain on the sideline. Looked like he hurt an arm. Jim Kelly now has 142 yards passing. He had just 66 in the first half. Fumble. Free ball. And the Miami Dolphins have it. Buffalo goes to the run and Buffalo pays again. Don, I think it was Byram on the carry. Now Byram's the lead blocker. Harmon is the first round draft choice who carries the ball. But Brown, I think, strips the ball away. Number 43. And then Brzezinski with the recovery. Now turnovers even. Three apiece. Dolphins had turned it over three times before Buffalo made their first misconnection. And now it's evened up, and the Dolphins might put on the knockout punch if with the wind at Marino's back. They take it in here. Hank Fuller's team in trouble right now when they were moving the ball. Throwing it, they move it. Running it, the rookie coughed it up as the Dolphins, expert ball tacklers, just punched it away. Looking for it on first down, wide open is Mark Duper. He can't hold out the 15-yard line. Rome's fell down. He's done that already this year. Rome's was a good 20 yards behind Duper. But of course, when this ball is thrown, Marino doesn't realize that Rome's is going to be on the ground. This is a mismatch. He bites on the out again. Duper goes right by him, but the ball's already been thrown when Rome's is on the ground. He almost makes a spectacular catch. Second Great second look by our NBC cameraman as with now 436 showing on the third quarter clock. Marino's been sacked just one time in this game. Once he fell down, you remember when he went back. And off to Hampton. Lorenzo Hampton, two arms on the ball, takes it to the 50. It's a first down for Miami. When the tacklers come up, the Dolphins put two arms on the ball. They fumbled early, and Shula gave a warning. Eugene Marv on the tackle. That's a draw trap. Did an excellent job at the line of scrimmage. Popped right through there. New England coming a little closer, though. The Jets still with a 14-point lead. Washington finally on the scoreboard after trailing 16-0. Chicago continues to lead Houston. Atlanta now coming back and taking a big lead on the Rams. Cleveland doing the same on Kansas City. Dan Marino on first down. Dumps it up to Tony Nathan. Running in the open field. The former Alabama star is down to the 35-yard line. First down, Dolphins. 15-yard pickup. The Bills just have nothing left on defense, Don. Their defensive line is basically at the line of scrimmage. A good block by Lorenzo Hampton right in front of Tony Nathan. Big pickup, Miami driving. Nathan has now caught just two passes, you see, but for big yards, 36. Dolphins, 20. Bills, 7. Three minutes and nine seconds to go in the third quarter. Hampton wrestling hard against Eugene Marv and Tony Virjanic. It had Virjanic in virtually the whole second half for Cumbie. Virjanic, a much bigger linebacker. Now watch the way they stand there in the huddle. You can tell they're tired. Bruce Smith, 78. Nothing wrong with the conditioning of this football team. It is simply the humidity. When your strength starts to go, I mean, nothing brings it back. 
Dolphins, of course, training this. That's why they've been such a great team, particularly in late in the season at the Orange Bowl. Long ball, man is open. Too much on it for Mark Clayton. Derek Burroughs was the beaten party that time. Earlier they got Rod Bellinger. Once again, man-to-man -man coverage. The Bills come with a blitz. Strong safety and inside linebacker. And it's a foot race. When Marino threw this ball the last time, he threw it up in the air enough that Duper could run underneath it. This time, Clayton, the ball wasn't thrown high enough. Just a little bit too long. Mark Clayton is 5'9", 185 pounds. He's one of the most spectacular athletes I've ever seen in my life. We had him on NBC Sports World in the Superstars competition. His athletic ability is it almost defies description he goes over that high wall at 12 foot wall without using the rope he jumps up and grabs the top and he's over in a half a second another long ball three on the field incomplete no 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 oh they're calling it incomplete i thought that was an interception by bellinger yeah, yeah he lost it when he came down Pruitt was the receiver this time they get good pressure on dan marino Let's see who it is. It's Bruce Smith that gets in there and puts a shot right in his chest. Marino wants to put the knockout punch on here, Bob. Yeah, that ball loose. Almost a nice interception by Bellinger. Pruitt goes up for it. Ball is taken away, but he couldn't hold on, so Reves comes in. You beat the Dolphins, and they've been beaten badly this season by throwing the ball. Kelly got hot in the third quarter, but they lost it on a running play to the rookie Harmon over the middle. And now Miami subsequently is looking for a long field goal. Thrilled hard by Reves. It's wide. And so the Dolphins, after the turnover, don't get points. The Bills get it back with 2.06 to play in the third quarter. Miami's still leading by 13. I've tried it. Now I believe it. Denerex tingles tells me it's doing more. Head and shoulders, no tingle. Both have dandruff medicine, but Denerex adds both an extra anti-itch medicine and conditioner, too. Goodbye, head and shoulders. Hello, Denerex. Hot and humid, just like the vacationers like it in South Florida, but not the Buffalo Bills who came down here after working in temperatures often in the 40s this week up in western New York. And now the heat factor is beginning to show as the Dolphins have opened up a 20-7 lead with 2.06 to play in the third quarter. Buffalo working into a gusting wind. It's died down a bit now, but much of the time, the flag at the open end of the orange ball is straight out. Coming out of the east in the Atlantic Ocean, right at where the Bills are moving. They'll have the wind at their back in the fourth quarter. Kelly takes a look, swings it out. He's got Riddick. Moves on Langford, only works every time when they swing it out to Riddick. That time they had Riddick at fullback, Ronnie Harmon at running back. First time I've seen Riddick at fullback today. The worst they do is nine yards. Now they've gotten it down the field. There's certainly no doubt in anybody's mind there. You can't go to that as a steady diet, though, and expect to beat the Dolphins. Do you agree? They haven't thrown the ball deep at all today. That's my point. Try it once or twice just to put the threat of it in there. Well, the Jets scored 51 against him throwing it. San Diego scored 50 against Miami throwing it. Today, the Dolphin defense has tightened up, though. Third down, second down and one. Good play call for Kelly. He can go deep. And he's going to... Now he swings it out, goes back to Riddick, drop ball at the 43. Third under down and one, Bills. Under underthrown ball. Yep, underthrown by Kelly. Didn't follow through on that. It did appear that he was... Uh, First thinking about going deep. He's trying to get it to Willie Broughton, it looked like. Do I have the right number? Yeah, Willie Broughton is in there at wide receiver. Third and one. One fifty-three to go in the third quarter. Miami 20, Buffalo 7. Third down and one. Riddick is in the backfield. And so is Carl Byram. We haven't seen Ricky Moore in the second half. Throwing a catch. And straight ahead. Running with the ball and getting ahead for the first down for Buffalo is Gary Wilkins, the backup fullback, backup tight end. 14 yard gain on third and down. Excellent job. Kelly's looking all over. He can't find anybody to throw it to. And then Wilkins makes the adjustment. To make himself open, you can see Hindle 
Andy Hindle, number 90, is the man in coverage. That's a nice adjustment by Wilkins. First down, Bills. Still throwing it to the running backs. They're getting it down the field. Doesn't take long when you're getting 14 on it. Miami defense now might be coming with a blitz as Kelly looks to put it up again. Going a little more run and shoot. Here's the home run ball to Jerry Butler, and it's overthrown at the five-yard line. So Butler comes in the game, runs the fly, and there's a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Could have a hold on Buffalo. Lyman trying to buy Kelly time to go deep. It is holding Buffalo. A lot of that has to do with fatigue. When you get this tired, it's like your feet are in the cement at, China, uh, at Grumman's Chinese Theater. They just won't move. Right in that walk of stars, huh? Yep, the walk of stars. Now, you knew, as we look at Don Shula, Hank Bullowell and Cincinnati Holding went to the defense and went to the Super Bowl, and they really did it on defense. First down. How much does he get involved with the offense? I don't know how much Hank knows about the offense. I really don't. He is a defensive genius. He's always been able to come up with the timely call, the right blitz, the perfect defense. At least he did in Cincinnati. And of course, looking at offenses all those years, certainly give him some feel for what the offensive is, offense is. But I think he pretty much turns it over to Bob Leahy and Jim Ringo. First down and 20 now for the Bills. They trail 20 to 7 late in the third quarter. One minute to play in it. Kelly gets time. On Rhodes, he's got a man and straight ahead. Running down the field is roll at tight end. Fatigue is showing on the Dolphins, too. Very poor tackling there, right between Brown and Offerdahl. Rawls just kept right on running. That's a 17 yard gain. This is, I believe, initially intended for Butler. Yeah, you see the tight end standing right there. Watch this. That's Ship and Brown, excuse me, and Offerdahl, and Brzezinski makes the tackle. And now well, we have a moment to NBC News. Okay, I'm Tom Brokaw, and with you. In Miami, Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy were the Miami Dolphins on this touchdown plunge by Lorenzo Hampton have opened up a 27-7 lead. We'll be back after these messages from your local station with the conclusion of the game. Back in Miami, Florida, with seven minutes and nine seconds and the clock running in the fourth quarter, the Dolphins have opened up a 27-7 lead over the Bills. Buffalo has the ball now. Second down and five coming up after a five-yard run by Rob Riddick. He is the lone setback as Kelly takes a look, throws, and he's almost intercepted by Jackie Ship. Now let's review around the league as the scores come in. There are some upsets in the making. And some unbeaten teams are going to continue that way today. The Jets holding to a seven-point lead in the fourth quarter after they led New England 24 to nothing. Dallas now opening up a 23 to 6 lead over previously unbeaten Washington. Houston has just scored and trails the Bears by seven. Atlanta's leading the Rams by a 23-7 count. Cleveland en route to a 4 and 2 record leading in the fourth quarter over Kansas City. New Orleans holding to a three-point lead over the Colts, and right now it is third down and five for the Bills. Jim Kelly at quarterback, troubled by a couple of second-half interceptions. Now he's on the run. He'll get the first down and plenty more as Jim Kelly slides out to the 44-yard line of the Bills. It's a first down Buffalo. George Little right in Jim Kelly's face did a nice little spin. He is certainly a mobile quarterback, one of the biggest quarterbacks, too. Watch from the right-hand side. You'll see George Little all of a sudden appear. He gets around the offensive left tackle. Looks like Ken Jones. Kelly is a guy out of that run-and-shoot offense with the Houston Gamblers. Can run the ball very well. After throwing for 66 yards in the first half, Kelly's now completed a total of 15 passes out of 21 throws, 181 yards. He has been intercepted twice. Kelly on first down. They've been scoring on the short patterns. Ricky Moore, the big back from Alabama, out of the backfield, gets ahead. He's got a gain on the play of about seven. Overdahl knocked him down as the game clock is down to 5.50 and running in the fourth quarter. And the Dolphins lead 27 to 7. Hank Buller came into the game as a head coach at Buffalo with an overall record of 3 and 14, and barring a dramatic comeback. His record as the Bills head coach will be 3 and 15. 
They go to the run, and Riddick breaks into open field. Rob Riddick, with some great moves, gets down close to the 35-yard line. First down, Bills, as the clock continues to run, 5.20 to play. Don, you mentioned the record of Hank Bulla. Of course, if the Dolphins win, that'll be 20 straight games that the Buffalo Bills have lost on the road. Last win, December 4th, I believe 1983, in Kansas City. Feats in a row on the road for the Bills. Now as Kelly takes a look and throws hard, he's too high for Andre Reed at the 17-yard line of Miami. Langford in the coverage down, I think, in the there's the comparison of the two quarterbacks. Starting wide receivers, Trump have no catches for Buffalo, Burkett and Reed. Marino with 337 yards made it look easy today. At one interception, you still got to put that on Clayton's shoulders. Not a bad day. And the Dolphins defense limiting Buffalo to just seven points. Lots of pluses all around for Miami. Ronnie Harmon takes it down to the 24-yard line. We do have Burkett down for one catch. But the Buffalo wide receivers have not been very productive. Very limited playing time for Jerry Butler. Came in and ran one fly pattern, and they didn't make the connection. He's been troubled with some injuries. Now the game clock is down to 4.20 to play as the Bills break the huddle at the 23-yard line of Miami. Dolphins trailed in the second quarter, 7-3. Came back to take a 10-7 halftime lead and now have opened up with 17 unanswered points in the second half. Ronnie Harmon is open. Takes on a tackler and gets down to the 15-yard line. Short patterns have worked all day for Buffalo. Judson was the tackler there. I think Miami's very happy to allow Buffalo just to throw the ball underneath. There's been only one attempt by Buffalo to throw the ball deep today. Bills actually picked twice in the first round. Harmon was picked, and then the big starting guard, Wolford, was picked at two number one. Second down and less than a yard for the Bills. Kelly can run for the first down and does as Jim Kelly's out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Kelly's First down Buffalo. Excuse me, Don. Kelly's not had a bad day today. 18 to 25, 207 yards, but the problem has been the two interceptions he's thrown. The four turnovers by Buffalo, three by Miami. Going to turn the tide of the game. But this is a franchise with a bright future with that young man at quarterback. Whatever and however long they struggle, struggle in 1986, eventually the cast of characters around Jim Kelly is going to get better. He is a quality performer. Right now, he's looking to get the ball in the end zone. Something Buffalo's not done since early in this game. End zone throw, and there's too much on it for the rookie tight end, Butch Roll. A seventh-round draft choice for Michigan State. And so it brings up second down and 10 for the Bills at the 11-yard line of Miami. They'll meet again in Buffalo Will the Dolphins and the Bills. November 16th, Miami travels to Buffalo. And I'm sure Jim Kelly was hoping for a little, little better return to the Orange Bowl where he played collegiately for the University of Miami. Just not worked out today. The fumbles took him out of a couple of drives. Bills will be home for four of their next five games. They play Indianapolis and New England the next two Sundays at Red Stadium. Go on the road to Tampa Bay, then come home to play Pittsburgh and Miami. Kelly on second down and 10. Riddick again. Rob Riddick is down inside the five-yard line with 3.09 to play. Langford down and hurt. I have a feeling a lot of that is fatigue. You can see how slow these players are. That outlet receiver in the flat has been open all day long for Jim Kelly. He's taken it. Their running backs have done an excellent job of getting the ball up the field after it's caught. Langford wanted no part of Riddick there. 
Bradford was being looked at on the Dolphin bench a little earlier for an injury. Now third down. The Bills need six for a first down, seven for a touchdown. A little run and shoot play. A throw and a catch. It's a touchdown for Buffalo. Andre Reed coming off the near flank, turning out at the ball, and he's in the end zone. So Kelly has his first touchdown throw of the day. And the Bills now trail 27 to 13 with 3.03 to play. Kelly looked awfully comfortable on that little half rollout. It looked like a page out of the run and shoot offense. He comes at the line of scrimmage, squares his shoulders. There's so much this kid can do. That is on the money right in front of William Judson. Touchdown. Andre Reed with his second touchdown catch of the season. Now Scott Norwood is on the field to try to point after for Buffalo. Extra point is up and good. With the Bills leading and the Bills trailing 27-14 back after this. Today's game is brought to you by the heartbeat of America. Today's Chevrolet. By Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by Harris Corporation and their Lanier Business Products Divisions. Lanier, we're easy to use. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy at the Orange Bowl in Miami with 3.03 left to play. The Bills have just put up a touchdown on a Jim Kelly throw to Andre Reed, but they trail 27 to 14. Dolphins expecting the onside kick. They have nine of their 11 players right up at the 10 yard line of 10 yards from the kicker. This is the first time this season the Bills have not led in the fourth quarter. In all previous five games, they've had fourth quarter leads. Here we go. Coming to the left side, the Bills set up the on try. They'll probably kick it hard. Look for the ball to bounce off somebody. Got to go 10 yards. Squib kick at the free ball. Did, no, didn't go 10 yards. Yes, it did. No, it didn't. Didn't Somebody go 10 yards. Outside. Didn't go 10 yards. It was illegally touched. That ball has got its kicked at the 35. It's, it's got to get to the 45. Either that or somebody was offside on Buffalo. Done nicely, though, by Buffalo. Timing with the kick. Almost on a snap count. Now, if the ball didn't go 10 yards, Miami can get it right there at the spot where it was illegally touched by Buffalo. Let's we'll see what the call is. Illegal touch, re-kick, five-yard penalty. I thought they had the choice. I thought they could take the ball. So it doesn't keep them out of uh, jeopardy because Buffalo's going to try it again. This ball has got to go 10 yards, five. It's got to get to the next line, and it's well, hit by a man. To block. Hit by... Byram, I believe. And therefore, it goes as an illegal touch, and they got to kick it again, and they're going to get the same thing again. That's one of the biggest problems that the Buffalo Bills have had in 1986. Baseball score for you. Bottom of third, Boston leads California 2-0 in, I would say, a must game for the yep. Boston Red Sox. World Series coming up on NBC Sports beginning Saturday night, October 18th. Right now, though, the Bills trailing 27 to 14 with 2.56 to play in the game, looking to try the onside kick again. Scott Norwood teeing it up just like he likes it. No pretense here as the Bills have all their people aligned on the left side. This is exciting. I like this. Here comes the rush. There's the kick. Didn't get there again. At least. Same thing. Five yard penalty. Kick it again. This is a good idea by Buffalo because the defenders are at the receivers at the point where you hope the ball is 10 yards deep. But they're very smart. That time, once again, it goes right off the. Goes right off the back of a Buffalo Bill. Now, I thought on one illegally touched, you could take the ball where it was touched. 
Illegal touch, number 35, two consecutive short free kicks. Penalty is declined. First down. Now they get the ball at the spot where the where it was hit. Don, one of the one of the big facts today, I think, in Miami's success, at one penalty. They've averaged 10 penalties, nine penalties a game through the first five games. At minus five yards, a big difference in the first five games. So now the Dolphins with a 27 to 14 lead take over the ball at the Buffalo 39 yard line. Dan Marino coming out of his passing slump in this game, putting up some big numbers. Going to Lorenzo Hampton, who takes the ball to the Buffalo 36 yard line as the Dolphins now with the big leader intent to protect their winnings and run the clock. Bills have three timeouts if they wish to use them. Clock at 235, 234, and ticking. Marino has passed for 337 yards in this game. One touchdown, one interception. He's put it up 41 times. It's completed 24. See the game clock winding down to the two-minute warning as the Dolphins go to the run, and again, on a second and six play, they don't get a lot. Miami now thinking to next week and the Orange Bowl in Miami when the bad Californians come in. The L.A. Raiders play here next Sunday. The official took a time out there. I'm not sure why. There's 2.06 left on the clock. But we do have a timeout. I didn't see it mentioned for either team. So with a timeout in the field, we break for this word. When the Seahawks battle the Raiders. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL 86. Joe Robbie on the Dolphins' sideline. His quote after the game a week ago at New England when the Dolphins were beaten 34-7. to One of the most inept performances ever by the Dolphins. We're wasting all the potential on this team. The Dolphins got well, at least for this week, against the Bills today. Miami leading 27-14 to with 2.05 to play. Tony Nathan runs the ball, takes on Tacklers, and gets all the way down to the 20 yard line. Now we have the two minute warning. 14 yard gain for Tony Nathan. We'll be back to the Orange Bowl after this. Alcoa presents Fantastic Finishes, 1985. On a reception that was super duper. Down tricky with Bob Trumpy back at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Buffalo going down to a fifth loss here, Mr. Trumpy, but they seem to have a lot of good players. I agree with you. Uh, all they got to do is just keep Jim Kelly healthy. This is going to be a fine football team. The first thing they got to do, though, is break some bad habits. Uh, losing on the road, this That's is going to be the 20th habit. straight. You got to make big plays to avoid... Uh, being shut out again on the road, uh, losing on the road. And, and you just got to bring in new players with a winning attitude, and I think uh, Buffalo will be fine. I'm, I'm not sure they'll be fine, but they're going to win a lot of football games with Jim Kelly at quarterback. No doubt in anybody's mind. By the way, one other comment. My kingdom for a shower. <laughs> it's been hot in Miami as Coach Buller and the Bills set to get on the plane back north. A 20th consecutive defeat on the road. The Houston Oilers with a record for futility, which they parlayed into about 15 high number one picks in the offensive line, which hasn't helped them much. No, no, you're absolutely correct. Quarterbacks get you in the end zone. But you win with defense. Show me a Super Bowl team that didn't have great quarterback play. But you win with defense. Right now, a handoff goes to Woody Bennett, and he takes it down inside of the 12-yard line. As we remind you that this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Miami Dolphins and the National Football League is prohibited. Our producer today for NBC Sports has been Glenn Adamo, our director, John Libretto. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman, the coordinating producer of football, Ted Nathanson as we're down inside a minute and a half to play at the Orange Bowl. 
The Dolphins off to their worst start in Don Shula's coaching history. A one and four start. But today they code a two and four with a win over Buffalo and now get set to take on the Raiders. Next Sunday, a game you'll see on many of these NBC stations. What do you better close to One ten to go and ticking. 27 to 14. Dolphins in the lead. Now with the break in the action, let's swing back to New York to NFL 86. Here's Bob Costas. Bob? Don, after once leading 24-0, the Jets lead over the Patriots, now down to 31-24, as Steve Grogan throws his third touchdown pass of the second half. This one goes 18 yards to Cedric Jones. As you see, about five and a half minutes left. Plenty of time. Don? Thank you, Bob. Jets never make it easy. No, they don't. They're, it's always interesting. Ask the Miami Dolphins. Ask the Buffalo Bills. Last week, the Jets hit the big pass to tight end Mickey Schuler. Bills even had an extra guy in the field to defend against it. Coach Shula has called off the passing right, right game, and they go right to the run. Down. Lorenzo Hampton, who's been in the end zone today, takes it down close to the eight-yard line. How about the Budweiser player of the game? I think it has to go to Dan Marino, Trump. I agree with you. Our NFL Budweiser most valuable player of this game, Dan Marino, who completed 24 of 41 throws for 337 yards and a touchdown. He was intercepted That's once. Budweiser will be making contributions to the charity Dan Marino's choice. Children's charity right now. Time is out, and the numbers are official. The Dolphins beat the Buffalo Bills 27 to 14. Well, now the press and the fans here in Miami will give the Dolphins a, a week off. They played well. Their defense played a pretty good football game. Hank Bullock goes back to Buffalo. 20 straight losses on the road. And the Raiders come in next here. We'll be back to the Orange Bowl after this. 